Hello, how's it going everyone? Steven Richards here, another time, talking about the Flat Earth, of course. Um, we're going to have a lot to cover today, so we have no time for BS, we're just going to get right on into this. Alright, so here we go. First, I have a statement to make. The sooner we realize there is no leader in the Flat Earth movement, the sooner we will get to where we want to be. We need to take the key points from everyone who has presented their theory and why they believe the Earth is flat and also their top proofs. We need to take that all into consideration and use everything to our advantage. We cannot just pick people apart. We're going to have to use everything together as a community to show everyone that we are not on a globe, that this is a deception, that we are indeed on a flat, motionless plane. We need to take all of the scientific proofs that Eric Dubé has presented and brought to the table. We can look at his 200 proofs that the Earth is not a spinning ball and take all of those into consideration. Thank you for your work, Eric. We are also going to need to take into consideration the fakery and the explosion of NASA that Matt Boylan has present us, presented us with. He was one of the first on the YouTube flat earth scene. Um, I don't know what's been going on with everyone lately, but like I said, we need to stick together, stop the fighting, unite, and be one. And also, thank you for your work, Matt. We're also going to have to thank Mark Sargent for all the work that he has done over the past uh, year and a half or so. He has done a wonderful job dumbing this whole subject down without using math or science or simple observations and experience you can do by yourself. So once again, thank you, Mark, for doing what you do. Keep doing it, and I look forward to keeping in touch with you. Now the list goes on after that. There are many more. I would like to thank everyone for all that you've done. We need to take everyone's work into consideration, and we just need to use all the work as a whole when we present it to the globalists. We must not continue to fight and shoe sides and call names and so on. We need to unite as a whole and together as one we can lead this movement into the perspective of the mainstream media, which is our goal. That concludes my statement. We're going to continue on with the video as followed. All right, so now we're going to talk about the magnetics and how a magnetic system would work on a flat earth model. As we can see on the screen here, a flat earth model. Now, if you have heard of the ring magnet, aka the speaker magnet, one of the magnets that is involved in the uh, major speaker system, um, there's one pole at the center. And then the second pole is the ring surrounding it. On the flat earth map, that would be Antarctica. On the next diagram that's about to pop up on the screen, it's going to show that in a simpler way. As you can see, north in the middle and south will always surround it. Um, flat earth magnetics, as explained with ring magnets, compasses will always point to magnetic north no matter where you are on earth because north is the center of the map and south is antarctica ice wall that will always surround us so that is how the magnetic compasses and all that stuff works it makes sense to me this is pretty much the most logical solution we got that that there is so that's probably the right way to think um, but there are also many more steps to the process. The process I'm talking about is the process of getting this whole thing mapped, which will happen sooner rather than later, I believe. But there are a couple more things we're going to get into later. 
they'll be further along further along in the video but now we're going to talk about the horizon and all that fun stuff science says the horizon is the start of the curvature if that is true with the aid of a zoom lens you should begin to see into outer space the further you zoom obviously that does not happen I've seen plenty of videos of the Nikon uh, Coolpix P900. Um, in a moment, I'll bring up a uh, little video from that that I was sharing today. It's a very, very good video. It just shows how far and how powerful the zoom is on that camera. It's very good. Um, Yes, that does not happen. With the aid of a zoom lens, you can bring things back into your perspective that have gone over the horizon line. And they should be out of view on the other side of the curved hill. That does not make any sense. Like if something, let's say you see a boat and disappears, you think, hey, it's going over the curve. No, it's just leaving your perspective. I pulled the if I had a P900, if I pulled my P900 out and uh, zoomed in, probably less than 50x zoom, I'd be able to see the boat and its entirety. Very interesting. Um, another thing we have to remember to measure the curvature, it's 8 inches per mile squared. 8 inches per mile squared. That's interesting. Another interesting fact is today I was at Goat Rock again. Um, what I said last time was incorrect, so I'll correct myself now. It's around like 27.5 miles from Goat Rock to Hartford. Um, did, it, did all the math out, there should have been 500 and some odd feet of curvature in the way there. So, actually, yeah, 510 feet of curvature in the way there. So clearly some buildings are taller than 512 feet, but they should also be leaning back on the curve, making it impossible to see the buildings in Hartford. And you can see them in their entirety. And you bring the, my binoculars out and you zoom in, and you can even see the bottoms of the building. So your refraction bullshit is just thrown out the door there everyone piss off with that the following are some pictures I got from Goat Rock um, today on Easter Sunday actually went up there with a couple of buddies went a little hike saw some good old flatness um, in a moment I'm going to throw up a video I was there a couple weeks ago around sundown and uh, well here it is look at this it's flatness it's crazy. these chemtrails they say we're crazy flat as fuck flat as fuck they say we're crazy if you see all the way over there that's Hartford that's Hartford no trails and your world's in the sky Hartford. just in front of the sun about 42 miles away. Shit's blue as fuck behind. It doesn't make any sense. And the chemtrails, perfectly in formation. We've been in the sky around two hours now. That was a contrail where it dissipated around one hour and 58 minutes ago. Most of you don't know that. Let's get back at a zoom. Look at that. So flat. The sun. Is right there. Tell me that's 93 million miles away. Like I said before, I've made the correction. It's 27.5 miles away from Goat Rock. I'm talking about Hartford. Not 42 miles away. I was punching in a different location on my phone that day. Um, but just to confirm, it's 27.5 miles away. Not 42. So you can't really kill me on that one. Because I know you want to. But now you can't. Ha. 
Alright, so what we got here is a uh, recording of the use of the Coolpix 900 by Nikon. Um, it's from 25.6 miles away. You can see the Superdome in New Orleans. That's it right there, that little white object that just fell off the screen to the right. Um, that object is very low to the ground. How can you see that if if you're on a curve like those buildings I guess they would give us that on a flat earth argument but but seeing the super the top of the superdome in its almost entirety from twenty five point six miles away I don't I don't I call bullshit on the globe right there. That's just a flat earth proof in itself. So P nine hundred by Nikon, look into it. Probably already know about it, but sickest camera on the market. Something strange happened on January 22nd, 2016. There were two synchronized photos of the moon. One in Queensland, Australia. One in Florida. So. One was at, uh, if it was 6.12 p.m. in Australia, 3.12 a.m. in Florida. Um, those line up uh, pretty perfect. Um, you can see the moon in both places at the same time. Now, for all of you Globers, Globemeisters, Globalists, um, how is that possible? That is completely impossible on a globe, because on a globe they are 10,249 miles apart. Using 8 inches per mile squared, the curvature formula comes out to 13,262 miles of curvature in the way. You can check my work using any any curvature uh, to inches to miles converting website. There are plenty of them out there, and there's zero explanation on why this should happen. So there's 13,262 miles of curved land on the Earth that is supposedly 25,000 miles in circumference. Just put that into your head. That is mind-numbing. Where would the, you couldn't be able to see the moon at that factor? Where's the curve? Not at Finally, we're going to talk about ferromagnetic fluid this is the last subject we're going to cover in this video and honestly it's a subject that kind of confuses me i'm not too familiar with the exact substance of ferromagnetic fluid but i do know if you take a mag a magnet on a f and uh, place it inside of the uh, ferromagnetic fluid on a flat surface as you can see here with borders it starts to rotate now what else do we know that is a uh, very magnetic and likes to rotate. The Earth is very magnetic, and the Sun likes to rotate us. This could be one of the final keys. In high altitude weather balloon videos, you can see it's very black above the horizon. This could be the substance that is talked about when discussing the firmament. This could be above us and below us, making that little illusion of back and forth circling. All right, well, that wraps this video up. If you have any questions or concerns, please shoot me an email at scuba2114 at gmail.com. You can contact me on Facebook, just Facebook Steve Richards. Um, I should pop up on there. Um, other than that, you have a wonderful day. And just remember, Earth is flat, so flat on. Keep it going. And take care. Peace out.